St Paul's Cathedral epitomises marvellous Melbourne. It's a welcome to people coming into the city. The interiors of St Paul's Cathedral are extraordinary. As a young architect, Butterfield made a name for himself designing the flagship Anglican Church project of All Saints Margaret Street in London. Now, All Saints is remarkable not only for its rich, bold and, of course, very colourful rendition of the Gothic Revival style, but also for its near-radical originality. To my mind, the authorities in Melbourne knew exactly what they were doing. They didn't want any old architect, they wanted the very best. We would now say that Butterfield was not only one of the best architects in Britain at the time, but one of the best architects Britain has ever produced. All of Melbourne's great landmarks came from gold. It was when the gold came and they said, now, now we can make the cathedral of our dreams. And that is what they did. Part of the story they tell is that Butterfield never came to Australia. The whole eight years of his involvement was put down on these drawings with his notes on and his directions, and they were packed up and sent to Australia. So this is one of the windows, um, obviously half. <laughs> so that's the full size. Looking at architectural drawings is really like reading a novel very carefully. There's a richness. The original thinking is there and then the people who are implementing it have left their marks. So Butterfield supplied the drawings. He sent them out in batches and he would send a certain number out and no more. And one of the interesting things about the drawings when you look at them is that each sheet has the architectural features, such an arch or an elevation or something, but every other blank section of the sheet is covered in instructions. It gives you an impression of his sense of anxiety, uh, that he wanted to be absolutely certain the building in the end would be what he wanted it to be. Butterfield was quite fastidious, but of course things happen on site. Butterfield would not have been in command of all of the variables that could occur uh, in this location, on this site, throughout the construction process. In the end, I think he just sort of threw the tail in and gave up, saying, OK, I've, I've basically given you all these drawings, this is my vision for the cathedral, this is what I, you wanted from me, here it is. Um, I suggest you build it as it is. Joseph Reed took over, so he was an excellent choice. He tried very hard, Butterfield wouldn't speak to him, and he just did the best he could under the circumstances with the drawings that, that he had. During the 1890s, there was a depression, and building in Melbourne ceased. This talks about the tower. Now, the tower that we see, my understanding is the tower that we see now down there is not Butterfield, that came after. Yes, yes. St Paul's Cathedral is really a project in two halves, um, two incongruent halves, you might say. The initial building campaigns only reached to that point of the base of the spires before work was stopped. And it wasn't again until much later, in the 1930s, that a, another architect from Sydney, John Bark, was commissioned to complete the building. So it does look as though now that it has been capped with a very different type of architecture. If you look at it now, you can see where it stopped, because the, 
The stone that was chosen by Butterfield, or which was used, was worn ponds and barrable sandstone, those two stones. John Barr used Sydney sandstone, which has a completely different look altogether. It's a pinkish colour. In my experience of looking at and tracking down architectural drawings of this kind right across the former British Empire, this is one of the biggest and most complete collections I've seen. So it is rare and I think quite remarkable that a collection of this scale still exists. I was tasked with the fantastic job of condition surveying all of them. So I've cited all 154 of them. Um, and just to have a look at their condition and kind of give them a, a rating based yes. on their condition and how long I think they might take to repair. So this is actually mould damage. Many of them are in tragic condition. They're worn and torn where they've been folded or rolled or they need conservation. It's terribly important that they are looked after. It's the preservation of who we are. Very great. So get your apron on. We'll, we'll pull you up. We'll pull up a chair for you and give you some smoke sponge. <laughs>